All right, day three, uh, leg day here at Gold Gym. So I'm gonna do a little split between quads and hamstrings, work both the opposing muscle groups back to back, and then uh, finish off with a little circuit and give some uh, calves some attention too. So we're gonna start off with some uh, hack squats, build up, get all the heavy weights done first, and then move on to more of the extension and isolation exercises. But a lot of drop sets, a lot of circuits, we're gonna keep that intensity high. Let's get to it. Get the blood rushing into the legs. <sighs> Hack squat wasn't always a favorite of mine. I used to stick to you know the basics: leg extension, squats, more machine-based stuff. The thing I love about the hack squat, especially for warm-up, is it allows me to get a lot of weight on the machine on my legs. But because of the angle. I'm not putting all of that tension, that stress, on the knees. So even though I'm going, I'm going deep. I'm just not taking my butt down to the floor because I don't need to. As long as when my hips go down, I get that stretch here. I don't need to be down here. But as long as my hips sort of in line with my knee, that's where I need to be. And the hack squat allows me to push the weight up. It's a very systemic. That's because the heart has to pump blood all the way down towards the leg, circulate it and bring it back up. I love it. Five sets here, couple warm up, progressively adding on the poundages, building up nine, nine or 11 reps there. But a uh, big squeeze, a lot of contraction. Legs are definitely warmed up, so now I'm gonna move on to, I alternate uh, squats, with leg presses from week to week. It just so happens this week is a leg press movement. So we're gonna use a, a cradle, get a real nice angle going down, get some more heavy weight and uh, keep pushing that intensity up. one of those days uh, I was feeling good I was feeling good so we're gonna I'm gonna load on more weight not on this one because I've hit my threshold but uh, I'm gonna stick with a lot of the basics today the fundamentals the ones where all of my limbs are properly aligned and I can manage the most weight so hack squats squats leg presses I'm gonna move on do air uh, a lying hamstring curl, leg extensions, and then, then I can isolate one or two with some uh, individual leg work. But if I'm lifting this kind of weight, I'm getting a solid five, six, seven reps in, I'm gonna keep pushing with that. Not every day, but on the days that I do, that's where I push it up, and that's what we're gonna do today. So uh, let's get the weights off and move on to the uh, hamstring curl. that feeling, feeling I love of in your mind having a rep range of eight and you're pushing through six and seventh and you get to your eighth rep and normally 
you've achieved what you want, so you stop. But it's these good days where you get to seven, you're at eight, and you go, I've got two more left in. You get to nine, you get to 10, you go, let's do one more. You suddenly get up to 11. And it's the same weight that I've done before when I'm repping out at eight. Now what does that tell you? Physiologically, I'm able to supersede that eight or ninth rep. It's here that we're limiting ourselves from really uh, being able to further reach your potential. So as hard as it is on those good days, don't let the reps bother you. Obviously get more than four or five reps, but if you're pushing seven, eight, ninth rep, just keep going. Push it to the limit. Let your body tell you uh, both through the movement and just that, that muscle connection that you've reached your limit. And if you truly can't push past that, you've reached the top, it's time to move on. Speaking of which, we're gonna carry this mentality over to the uh, leg extension and uh, just get the full stack moving. four different exercises on legs. Certainly today, some days I'll do a lot more variation. Six or even seven different exercises for legs. And that's okay. I have a good workout, I get a good pump, a lot of different angles and variations. This workout is more back to basics, sticking with the main compound, uh, cornerstone type exercises for legs. And uh, I'm, I'm getting a really good pump. Considering my legs don't get that vascular compared to around my arms and shoulders, this is a sign that I'm getting a lot of blood, a lot of nutrients and oxygen into the muscle. So uh, it's about five sets on each exercise, 20 sets near enough for my leg workout. That's, that's enough for today. But I'm gonna move on and do uh, some calves. A uh, lot of back-to-back -back exercises, both with a, a bend knee position and a straight knee so that I can work the soleus and the gastrocnemius and at least be working towards more of a balance uh, and conditioning in the lower half of the leg, the calf, and my upper portion of the leg. So let's go check that out. In a, in a similar way to forearms. And by that I mean with forearms, you've got two main functions, a flexor and an extensor. So both, if you think, the top and the underside of the muscles are working in unison. But what do you think happens with the calf as you pull your toes in and extend it down? You've got these large uh, soleus and gastrocnemius muscles working, but also this, the tibialis anterior. This muscle has to work a lot, especially for sports and movements where you're doing a lot of um, projecting yourself off of your foot. So for me, just for the pure aesthetics, but also the functionality of the body, it's important that I train the tibialis as well as hitting calves. And look, I realize many people won't have access to this uh, cradle type machine. Really easy. Sit on the end of a bench so that your heels are off the bench. Use a towel or a t-shirt and use a vertical dumbbell so that your feet, the dumbbell kind of goes between your feet and then you can just mimic that same movement. It's just as effective to work the tibialis and it's imperative, in my opinion, that you're working the tibialis interior along with the calves, especially after a leg workout when you've got all of the blood pulled in the lower half of the body. There's no point really going to train calves after a shoulder workout, a big back workout, when you've got all of the blood and the nutrients in the upper region, and then you're going to go heavy on the calves. Utilize those muscles within the, the larger muscle groups 
on days that we train them. So uh, three or four supersets here. I'm gonna finish off the uh, calves and the leg workout in general with now uh, some standing calf raises and also integrate in some single leg calf raises with a slight bend in the knee, you'll see what I mean. done man that workout was uh, it was intense it was short and I just felt like I was on a mission to just get that work done on that one exercise and move on there's no lingering around there's no walking around the gym I wasn't on my phone seeing what's up my mind was just locked into the workout and I feel that's a big big component of a good workout and a, a great workout it's keeping that that fire hungry, keep that intensity. And that's what I did with uh, quads and hamstrings and then calves as well. Usually, I hit my calves at the end of a leg workout. Some days I'll train calves on their own. But rarely do I get that kind of full pump in my calf like I have done today. And I put that down to two things. One, if you've been following me on my, uh, my social media, my Instagram story, I'll often post what I'm eating, where I'm out, what I'm doing. Well, we're at a restaurant, we're doing a full day production. Steak, white rice, some peppers, mushrooms, onions. Basically, a lot of sodium, some carbohydrates, a bit of fats, and some high quality protein. That was about an hour before my leg workout. With that meal in me, I felt like I had enough fuel ready so that I can just get my muscles pumped. And you'll see early on in the workout, I wasn't really going for that full extension. I was just pumping the muscle with a lot of weight. So I want to get that glycogen into the muscle cell. Get the muscle cell turning over and using up whatever energy it's got there so that that nutrition, the energy circulating within my bloodstream has a home to go into those muscles. And like I said, it's not every day that I'm going to have a workout like this. Maybe once or twice a week, but the days that I do, I know to leave the reps and the weights to the side and just really go with that gut instinct to push that weight heavy and uh, I hope that you guys can do the same too. So uh, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and uh, I'll see you guys outside. Wow, what a leg workout. You know, i, I, I got to be honest, walking into the gym, legs, legs aren't my favorite muscle to train. Shoulders, arms, chest, legs, I enjoy but they're not my favorite. And that's probably because I feel that there's somewhat of a, a lack of symmetry from my upper body to my lower body. You know what I'm talking about. For anyone who's not um, blessed with great calves or big legs, and I'm relatively a, a smallish person. I'm, I'm more of an ectomorph than a mesomorph, which means I've got to really work hard to build up to and certainly maintain full muscles. Not as hard in my upper body, but for my legs, yes. But here's what I'm getting at. I found that when I don't let that consume me and I just walk into the gym almost with a completely clear mind without any expectations of, ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't squat because I'm not gonna be doing as much weight as I did. That negativity is gonna hold me back before I even get through the uh, gym door. So today I walked in there and I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some weight on. I'm gonna go heavy. I might not go as heavy on some exercises that I've done before, but that doesn't matter. I'm not gonna base today's workout off of previous workouts. All I knew walking in was that I'm gonna have a good workout, I'm gonna push the weights, and that's all I was thinking about. And you know what? I had a good workout, and I pushed the weights, and my legs feel, my legs feel like tomorrow they're gonna be really sore, which is not, necessarily what I'm aiming for but I know that I've reached a level uh, that my body now has to adapt and acclimatize to and that is where I, I'm gonna start to see some more kind of gains and progression so you know really heading into the gym with all of the different factors and stresses relationships work whatever is going on in your life as hard as it is when you walk into that gym 
whether it's by putting music on, headphones, finding a new training partner or, or your current training partner, but just really committing to the workout. And if that means leaving your phone at home, in the car, in your gym bag without touching it, as hard as it might be, give it a try because I was not on my phone today. I committed to that workout 110% and I feel the benefit of having done that. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna wrap things up. Got my protein shake here, uh, two scoops away. A little bit of uh, waxy may starch in there as well, about 60 uh, grams. And then I'll eat about an hour now. And if you wanna stay up to date on all of my daily sort of fitness activities, um, Instagram, Robert's Fitness, and you'll see my full training program and my diet and supplementation regime over at supplementsworld.com under the training tab. Until then, keep training hard. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.